Good morning. Hi, everybody. We are live on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. It is 11 a.m. on the Friday of, I don't even know what the date is, doesn't really matter, uh, 29th of July, uh, 11 a.m. UK time. Welcome to my weekly show that I do at this time. Um, this is Resilience Live. Resilience Live is all about how to supercharge your resilience, well-being and performance in your life and at work as well as your personal life. And when I do these shows, um, I cover a lot of different topics. It's all about human development, human growth, living your best self, being your fullest self. Um, and, and that's multidimensional. So sometimes I talk about things that are related to psychology. Sometimes I talk about things related to emotions, spirituality, quantum physics, the environment, company cultures, teams. Um, there's so many different things that I can talk about uh, when it comes to developing yourself because you are a very, very complex, multidimensional being. So I pick topics each week as they come to me uh, and talk about um, whatever I feel is prevalent at that moment. And often I talk about things that are going on in my life because I'm on an ongoing journey of building my resilience, my well-being, my growth, my development, my happiness, success, and so on. Um, so I'm always teaching uh, from my example and my experiences as well. We have a couple people here. Thank you uh, for joining. Salia says, hello. Uh, I'm doing great. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Thank you. Uh, maybe. I don't know if we'll talk today about why I'm not doing right. I'm all right. I'm generally, I'm great. But uh, yeah, um, anyway, I don't know. Maybe we'll go into, I don't know yet. We'll see how it goes. Um, but Celia, to see you has also just reminded me of a really, really important thing. There's two important things I need to say before we get into this topic. Uh, number one is that whatever I share with you is for education only. It is not therapy, it is not clinical treatment or anything like that. I am not clinically trained. If you're really struggling mentally, emotionally, physically, please go and seek clinically trained uh, support from clinical practitioners and consultants and so on. That's not what this is, okay? The second thing I need to say, um, three things. Second thing I'll say quickly is that if you're watching on this screen and you've never seen me or you're here, I'm turning my head every now and then because I have a number of platforms this way and I have Instagram down here on my phone. So do bear with me if you see me just sort of moving my head a lot. Um, but the third thing I wanted to say that uh, I've just been reminded about um, is that if you comment, which I really want you to do, please, because this isn't just about me sitting here rambling on my own little woo, which I can do for days. It's about a dialogue. I want to know your questions. I want to know what you're going through. I want to know your experiences. Um, then you can comment and I will see those. But bear in mind that on all platforms other than Instagram, your comments will remain on the system wherever you are posting them. Um, so just have a little think about that before you post things. Make sure you're comfortable with that. If there are things that you ever want to ask me that are um, personal, but you still want me to discuss them and give you an answer and give you information, um, the best way to do that is to actually message me in advance. So I post these, I schedule these lives two to three days at least in advance each week. So you'll know the topic. So if you tune into that and anything's coming up for you around that, um, I know it's not always easy because sometimes things come up as we're going through the conversation. And I don't think there's a way to do private comments, unfortunately, at the moment. Um, but yeah, so so you can always send me things in advance and say, keep it anonymous, you know, and so on. Or if you just want to share your experiences with people, because that's really powerful as well. Um, I can keep those anonymous for you as well. But if you post during the chat, um, it's going to stay up there. But I hope that doesn't stop you from posting because I'm I get bored just doing this by myself. I, what makes this amazing for me is the fact that you question me uh, and the fact that you share your experiences and what you're going through because that's helped me. I have more fun. It's much more helpful for other people as well um, because other people will learn from what you're going through and you will realize that you are not alone. So don't be afraid to speak. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to speak your truth um, and share it because we are all going through this stuff together. Uh, so Leah says DM. Yes, absolutely. Go for it. You can DM me um, with any questions that you have. So, hey, let's get rolling. Today, we're going to talk about 
how to not let the past drag you down how to not let the past drag you down um this is this is a big it's quite complex and a big topic but i'm going to just try and touch on it and and the overall premise that i'm sharing with you today is that your focus creates your reality so whatever you're focused on is going to multiply and manifest in your life and so if you are focused on the past and what's already gone that is going to continue perpetuating in your life and even when it's a little bit sneaky even when you think you're focused on the future and something new that you want to create often underneath it's still with a view to try and resolve something that's sticking with you from the past it's not a pure intention and so you're still actually focused on the past so this is quite a complex dynamic um we'll see how much we do or don't go into it today um but the point is your focus creates your reality so if you just imagine with me now you're sat there and you have you can only really focus in one direction at any given time you can be here now in the present which is great you can be looking forward into your future and what's possible which is great or you could be looking in the past in that direction uh which also has benefits by the way we'll go into that in a moment um but i can only focus in any one direction and wherever my mind goes energy follows and manifestation occurs wherever we're focused we're creating patterns of thoughts feelings behaviors actions that then manifest in our physical world but what I'm not saying to you by the way is ignore your past okay so there's a couple of things that happen some people focus too much on the past whether it's childhood pains traumas problems dysfunctional relationships which do happen by the way to a lot of us as children and we spend our adult lives wishing oh why was it not like that why did i get that why couldn't it have been different it was unfair so on so on so on so on um but the other side of it um you know, is that, is that we ignore it completely. So on one hand, we're focusing too much on the past uh, and spending too much time wishing and worrying and being angry and resentful or maybe being ashamed about something we did. Um, but the other side of it uh, is that we actually avoid it. There are many people who have done and had and experienced a lot of really difficult things in the past and then they act like it's fine. Oh no, it was great. Everything's, my childhood was great. Oh, I'm great. Everything's fine. Really not. And so because you're not addressing it, it also keeps coming up and and bubbling back up. So I'm not saying ignore your past, but I'm saying don't live there. Okay. the reason we want to pay attention to our past is that your human experience right now is based on your past. So in the first few years of your life, you created thoughts, feelings, behaviors, patterns and a sense of self and the world around you that you are repeating in your adult life. So you need to understand your past because what happened to you in the first four years or so of your life is dictating your adult life right now, unless you've transcended and done the work. But whatever happened in those first few years is having a massive impact on who you are now. So that's why we don't want to ignore it. We want to learn Ah, oh, what happened to me in my childhood. What were my relationships like? What did I learn about myself, others and the world in those first few years? Did I learn that I'm worthy, that I'm great, that I'm supported, that I'm capable? Or did I learn to shut up, be quiet, uh, that I'm unworthy, that people don't love me, that I need to be perfect? So on, so on, so on, so on. We all have these wounds. And all those things we learn then become our thoughts, our feelings, our behaviors and our actions, which get us our results in the physical world. So what you learned in the first few years is whether you like it or not driving your life right now. You may not be conscious of it, you, but you are repeating the patterns of your childhood. I'll give you an example. It's not in all cases, but often children who are abused will end up in abusive relationships as adults. It's patterns, it's conditioning. We repeat and repeat and repeat. You become like your parents, however much you might not want to be that. <laughs> There's so many things. You Essentially, it's quite robotic and dull in that sense, but it's logical and it's great. Is that in your childhood, you get programmed, you learn certain things, and then you just play them out again, 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 again in the rest of your life. And you're doing that unconsciously. 
Um, we have a few good mornings here. Good morning, Mesh. Uh, Sia so says, leave the past where it belongs. That is the past. Yes. Uh, we have a LinkedIn user with no names. Um, so I'm sorry, sometimes that comes up. It says, great to be able to watch you today, Pinky. Uh, thank you, uh, whoever you are. Thank you so much for joining me. It's great to have you. Kurt is here. Hello, my lovely soul. Good morning to you. Uh, we got some people on the Instagrams as well. Hello, Mwah, beautiful souls. Um, so where was I? So, so, so essentially what I was saying, um, is that we need to understand the past. Okay. I'm not saying avoid it, uh, whether it's your childhood or even more so, uh, recent behaviors that can come up in your life, recent experiences. You lost that job. You lost that relationship. Someone was mean to you. Um, by the way, it tends to be the negative things that we ruminate on, right. And stick to us. We're not sitting there thinking, oh, every day we're thinking, oh, I remember when I had that great time as a child and, oh, I did this great project last week and everybody loved me. And those aren't the things that are going in our minds and through our minds all day, every day. It's more the painful stuff that sticks, right? They say that negativity is like Velcro, positivity is like Teflon. So the Velcro sticks, the Teflon, it just slides straight off. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm not saying ignore all of that, by the way, uh, we need to become self-aware. You need to learn about yourself. And if you are going to learn about yourself, you need to understand your past and how it has shaped your thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and therefore how your life is going. Um, so we're not trying to ignore it, but what we don't want to do is then go, oh, I need to fix it. I need to heal it. I need to fight it. I need to change it. I need to change myself. I need to get over it. I need to rah, 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 rah. And I know that that is not what you've been taught if you're in personal development space. And also what I'm even saying is not quite as simple in the way that I've said it, but it is. But I have to keep things simple because we don't have a lot of time. Um, so Kirat says we mirror behaviors from childhood. Yeah, we repeat behaviors from childhood. Yeah, mirror is also a word um, that we could use. Your behaviors are programmed in your childhood. Um, so let's say, for example, you grew up in an environment where um, if you were always doing as you were told exactly when you were told it, you got love for that, you got praise for that, you got given treats for that, then that conditions you that I must always do as I'm told. That's how I get what I want. That's how I get love. And also conditions you to believe that if I don't do what someone else tells me, maybe I'm going to get punished or maybe I'm not going to get love. And so this is where we start making our little rules about how we live in the world. If you grow up in an environment where um, you have, I mean, there's adverse childhood experiences, divorces, abuse, all these things, uh, you learn, you think that that's how the world works. And so this programs your brain and then you just learn your patterns, your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors, and you just repeat them in your adult life, um, even though you're not a child anymore. So whatever you learned in the first four years is what you're doing in your adult life. Um, you could be a really, really powerful CEO, you could be amazing, a uh, really, really strong, powerful person. And then you could go home and see your mom and you snap straight back into that childhood little meek little pattern that you might have with her. Um, it, it, it's all just repeating patterns, basically. Uh, I feel like I've not explained that very well. I'll be honest with you guys, my head's a bit messy at the moment, but I'm doing my best. But, um, but, but essentially, you're right, Garrett. Whatever you learned in the first four years is what you repeat. Um, and so, so, you know, the past is always here because you're running it over and over by your behaviors that you learned. Um, and Salia says we should be able to leave the past and be a balanced individual regardless. Yeah, it is. It, I'm going to teach you now. Maybe we go on to that now because I, I have about 15 minutes. So, so here's the thing. We look at the past and like Kirat says, we're mirroring what we learned. And there may be many things we learned that we don't like, that we don't want, that are bad, that are difficult. So for example, I learned to be a people pleaser because I had to sit down and do what everyone told me, otherwise I'd get you know in trouble. And so I now do that in my adult life, but it doesn't serve me as a fully functioning adult. It actually makes my life really difficult because I'm trying to please everybody and then it means I don't please myself and I don't do what I need. And then I spread myself too thin, then I get exhausted, blah, 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 blah. So I don't want to be a people pleaser. But here's the thing. Do I sit there and say, oh, 
I've got to fix my people pleasing tendencies. I've got to change my focus and my mindset. I've got to realize that I've got to please myself first and blah, 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 blah. That is what a lot of mainstream teachings will tell you to do. And I've done that. I've been doing this work for 16 years. But here's the thing I've realized. You don't need to fix or change your beliefs. You don't need to fix or change the past. You don't need to fix or change your wounds. You need to be aware of your wounds. You need to know, ah, I'm a people pleaser. And maybe in a given circumstance situation right now, I may take a different action. I may not please that person right now and I may choose to please myself. But you don't need to sit there in your mind and go, oh, let me think about how I'm worthy and I'm valuable and I can please myself and blah, 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 blah. I haven't got time to go into the deeper consciousness of it and why that doesn't work. But essentially, um, all you do by doing that, trying to fix your past, fix your wounds, fix your pains, fix your whatever you learned that you don't like anymore that isn't serving you, um, is make it stronger. What you resist persists. And when you're trying to fix it, you're like, oh, I don't want that. I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to think like that. Blah, 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 blah. So be aware. If this is what I went through in the past, this is who I have become. These are the things that it's created in me. Be aware of it. But then remember, you got you can only look in one direction. Past that way, that way is future. I don't know what way you're seeing it, <laughs> but um, if I'm looking over here at the past and saying, "Oh, here's all the problems. Here's all the things I've got to fix. Here's all the things that happened to me," here's a, I'm not saying it didn't happen, and I'm not saying ignore it. I'm not saying it wasn't hard if it was hard, but you gotta know when to stop looking there. Because you can, if you're driving a car and you want to move forward, which direction are you looking in? Are you looking in the rear view mirror or are you looking straight ahead? I've got to look, I'm looking in the rear view mirror while I'm driving. I'm going to crash and burn. No, we do need to look there every now and then to check. Oh, is everything okay? Is it oh, cool? Yeah, what's going on in there? Same with your past. You need to look at it and say, oh, okay, what did I go through? How did that shape me my psychologically, emotionally? What behaviors has that taught me that now as an adult, I'm realizing aren't actually helping me in my life? Yes, do that. Reflect. Don't ignore it. Don't pretend everything was fine. you got to look at it. A lot of people don't want to look at it. But then i got to turn in the way that I'm going. Okay, I've got to turn my head. Your focus creates your reality. Your mind in your eye, in your mind, and your focus can look in this direction. Where is it pointed? Where is it pointed? Wherever it's pointed, it's what's going to then manifest in your mind. Okay, where is your mind focused? So if my mind is focused on oh, all the bad things and I've got to fix these, look at all the problems, I've got all these problems, blah, 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 blah. All right, cool. Your mind goes, yep, yeah, okay, you got all these problems. Your mind says yes to whatever you tell it. So if I tell it I'm broken, I'm fixing, it's just going to go, yep, 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 okay, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But if I say, okay, cool, objectively, this happened to me, objectively, this is what has gone on, okay, this is what it's done to me, for me, whatever, this is how it's shaped me. Let's say it like that, this is how it's shaped me. And that's not personal, by the way, that's just how consciousness works. We've, we've all been shaped in some way or another. And many of us have wounds and problems, by the way, even if they try and act like they don't. Oh, I hear it all the time. My childhood was great. Everything was fantastic. Oh, life is so great. You scratch beneath the surface and you see it's like, whoa, there's a lot of stuff going on there. People are not aware. They don't want to look at it. And that's okay. So you have to be willing to face your past, but not to live there. OK, understand your past, but don't then try and fix it. Know how the past has shaped you, but then don't think that there's something wrong with that. It isn't. We've all been shaped. This is how consciousness works. There's no avoiding it. If you want to avoid that, you're going to have to not be here. OK, and please don't do that. And anyway, you're here already. It's already happened. OK, so. What we want to do, here's the truth of the past. Oh, I'm understanding it. I'm getting aware of myself, how everything is shaped in, why I think like I think. Okay, cool. Great. This is really interesting stuff. I'm learning about myself. Knowledge is power. Self-awareness is the number one life skill. Oh, I've got it. Cool. Now, where am I going? Where am I going? That is all you need to ask yourself. And I'm going to show you. Now, you may remember last time. If you've watched it, I showed you my resilience training model. This is resilience. This is well-being. This is a life model. This isn't just resilience and wellness. This is how to live life. This is how you function as a human being. 
And what we spoke about is your mind leads to your emotions, which leads to your body behavior, which leads to your results. And we go in the cycle. That's your pattern from your past that I'm talking about. You come, you're born, your soul is here in the middle. Comes here, is born into, oh, sorry, these are all different reflections I've got everywhere. So your soul is born into the world, into the environment. There's a phrase which says, um, the world shapes us and then we shape the world. So you're born, little, little beautiful soul, little baby, little baby, and the environment around you starts to shape you. It forms your mind. It forms your perceptions. It creates the way that you think, the way you see yourself in the world. That drives the way that you feel. That drives the way that you act and how your body is ends up being shaped and your health and all sorts of things, how you handle stress, all this stuff. And then your body and your behavior and how you act in the world gets you another physical role, result in the environment. And you go round and round and you just repeat that pattern for the rest of your life. So so this is how the past is very important and why you must look at it and you must understand it because it is creating your life experience whether you like it or not so if you want change you must first understand what you're currently creating and how okay you must understand your current state we do this in consulting all the time you've got to understand the current situation not just the vision but you must then also have the vision and here's what a lot of people do they say oh for, for my future i'm going to go here into my mind and i'm going to try and create my vision of what i want for the future but this mind has already been programmed and is limited by the environment and the human experience. So it's only going to give you more of what you've already had because this is like a little program in a computer and you're going in there saying, give me something else, what I want in the future. And sometimes it tricks you a little and it makes you think that you're going for something great. So for example, um, if in the past you felt unworthy and insignificant, your mind will go, go, well, hey, let's be really successful. Let's make loads of money. Let's have 10 million followers and then we'll be significant. And you think, yeah, that's what I want in my life. Nonsense. I was going to swear. Won't do it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm quite proud of myself there. Uh, but, but that's nonsense. That's a weak vision. That's what we call a negative vision. So if you really want to stop them, because that's still associated with the past, they're still trying to fix a wound from the past. So if you really want to transcend your past and stop letting it drag you back, we don't create our visions from here or here or here or here. We go to the heart, to the soul. Okay, we drop all of this. There's no fixing. There's nothing to fix. The past is done. It shaped you, whatever. I know it's hard. I'm not saying it's not hard. I'm not saying ignore it. I'm not saying it isn't painful. I'm not saying it doesn't come up in your life every day and trigger you. Absolutely, I live it every day too. But what I do is I've created my vision for the future from my heart and I turn my head towards that every single day. And that is the power the soul is your light. The soul is untainted by this. The soul is pure and clean. The soul is untouchable. The soul is your source. You go to the source and you recreate from here consciously what you want in your life. When you were a child, it happened anyway. Your soul came, but the environment affected you. And then you shaped your thoughts, your feelings, and so on. But as an adult, rather than taking your cues from the environment, you can choose to consciously take your cues from your own heart, your own soul, your own truth, who you are before you came here, before the world shaped you, before you had trauma, before the pains, before the beliefs, before the I'm not good enough, blah, 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 blah. You come back home. Okay, you come back home. And from here, you say, who am I? What do I love? What would make my heart sing? What do I want to create? Why did I come? Whatever questions come for you. Because that part of you never goes away, by the way. And from here, you see and create a vision for where you're headed, for your future. And it will be powerful. It will be authentic. It will be true. It will be magnetic. And it will pull you towards it. And I say this because I'm living it. I've had so much stuff in the past and it triggers me every day and I'm still in it right now where things are being triggered and I'm snapping back into regression and old things. 
but I have created a vision from here that is so powerful and so propelled by something beyond physical time and space that it pulls me. I have to focus on it. I have to turn my head towards it every day because the past is there going, this is Pinky's role. Pinky is like this. Pinky does this. Pinky plays this role. Pinky is not good enough. Pinky, blah, 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 blah. I have to say, I hear you, but I'm looking that way. I'm going that way. So I sit down with my vision and I read it and I visualize it and I train my brain to take from my heart and my soul and empower me from there to move me forward, to propel me. And my vision is so powerful. It's like a magnet that it's taking me to it. So it's taking me that way. The past loses power. Where is the power? You got to put the power in front of you in whatever you're creating and it becomes powerful and it pulls you towards it. And soon before you know it, all these past things that happened, they got, they're gone or they're there, but they're tiny. They don't hold the power in your life. Um, let's just do some comments before I give you a very quick visualization because I'm overrunning it. So uh, maybe I should just extend the session a little bit. I don't know. Um, let's just do some comments. Uh, what have we got here? Kirit says it's a fantastic way of putting it. Thank you. You're welcome, darling. I don't know what I said at that point, but I'm glad that it resonated with you. Uh, so yeah, by, by, but like you say, we can't change the past and it doesn't need to define who we are. No. And if we are conscious of that, somehow we are shaped by our if we are conscious, who we are, if we are conscious, somehow that we are. I'm not sure I've read that properly. Sorry, lovely. I'll read it again later probably and just make sure I've understood it. But what I'm getting from you now, yes, you can't change it. Um, it has defined you because that's just how the psyche works. You are defined by your parts. You can't escape that. That's just like saying I've got five fingers and I've got two arms and two legs because I'm a human. Yes. So therefore your mind, your psyche, your identity, your ego, your sense of self is shaped by your past. No escaping that. That's just how it works. But it then doesn't have to dictate your future. And that's where you get to choose. That's where your power comes in. Celia says we are more powerful than we realize. Exactly. You are a conscious creator of your reality. You are made in the image of God. God is the ultimate creator. And if you are made in God's image, my suggestion to you is that you are also an ultimate creator of reality. So this is how we tap into that. By stopping looking at what's gone on, be aware of it, understand it, see how it shaped you, take it in, embrace it, don't fight it. Be aware, it's all raw material, it's all knowledge. But then you must turn towards your creation and what you want to create. And most says, how do you deal with a traumatic experience from your childhood, e.g. losing a loved one. I'm going to come back to that a little bit later, Omesh, um, if we have time here. I'm just going to keep going with the flow of what I'm doing at the moment, which is we're looking at the future vision. And I just want you to play with this with me as well, Omesh, in case it gives you something. Um, but there's a few things I'll say about that in a moment. But I want to keep going on this uh, trajectory. So I'm going to give you a quick visualization. I'm sorry, I know I'm going to overrun, but if you have to go, you can go, you can come back and watch this later. Um, and also when you do this visualization, you may want, not you may, I suggest you do it for longer. And therefore, again, if you come back and listen to it again later, um, but I'm going to talk you through it and have a little play. And I'd like us to do it together if you're uh, able to stay because we're creating the energy, right? All one energy, all one consciousness, we can get in this together. So this visualization is helping you to connect your heart and know your true vision about what you would love to create and experience in your life, untainted by whatever has come before. It's pure, it's oneness, it's wholeness, it's completeness. Um, and what's, that's what we want to connect with when you create your goals, your visions, whatever it is you want to go for moving forward. Um, it must come from that place, not from this place up here. So I'd like you to, first of all, just uh, wherever you are, if you can, just settle in a little bit and become a little bit comfortable. No fixing of anything. Doesn't matter if you feel rubbish right now. Doesn't matter if you're anxious. Doesn't. It's okay. Just be aware of whatever's going on for you right now. And I, as you can see, I've already closed my eyes. You can close your eyes if you feel comfortable to do so. Obviously, if you're like driving or something and just listening to me on audio, please don't do that. But if you're safe and comfortable and available to do so, I'd like you to just close your eyes and really bring your awareness into yourself, inwards. Turn your eye inwards, your mind's eye. 
and take a few deep, slow, conscious breaths all the way into the base of your belly. And when I say that, I mean push your belly out when you breathe in, like you could put your hands on your belly and just feel it. Make sure you push it out like a balloon with the breath. Slow, deep, conscious breaths. And you may find your mind wanders and that's okay. Just gently pull it back to the here, to the now. Relax your shoulders, relax your body. If you can, just let go a little. And I'd like you to set an intention. And that intention is to receive your heart's true desires. So just say to yourself, I intend to receive my heart's true desires. And now what I'd like you to do is imagine that you are a toddler. A little, little toddler and you're in some kind of green space, a garden, a meadow, a field of some sort. And you're very safe here. You're absolutely perfectly safe here. There may be people around you who are looking after you. You may be alone. Whatever comes up for you in your imagination is perfect. But just know that here, as a little toddler, you are very safe. And I want you to imagine being in this green space, this garden. And it's like the first time you've ever seen anything like this. And you're looking around this beautiful garden and you're just like, wow so cool it's so amazing and you got this big grin on your face and I want you to imagine running along the grass maybe you're barefoot can you imagine what it feels like to have the bare foot on the grass and feel the grass underneath your feet as a gorgeous little toddler as you run along with a big smile in your face in this beautiful beautiful natural surroundings And I'd like you to imagine that you can see flowers in the grass and just pay attention in your mind's eye to these flowers. What colors, what shapes, what sizes, how many, where are they? And just really take in the beautiful, vibrant color. Maybe there's white daisies, maybe there's yellow buttercups and daffodils and sunflowers and violets and whatever it is that you see. And I'd like you to imagine that there's a rose. And imagine reaching out and touching that petal and feeling the velvety softness. Can you imagine what that feels like? Really feel that softness. And now I want you to imagine you can smell the rose. Taking that beautiful scent. It's amazing, you're just like, wow. This natural world is just so much fun. It's amazing. Maybe there are animals. Maybe you have furry friends who come and see you that you're playing with. And you can see the birds and so on. And you're just loving this environment. And then you're going to lay down on the grass. Imagine that you lay back and feel the warm sun bathing your skin. You're so relaxed and so safe. And... As you lie back and look up at this beautiful blue sky, I'd like you to imagine you're gonna gently start floating upwards. Very safely, you're gonna start floating off the ground, slowly, slowly, like a bubble, so weightless and empty. And I'd like you to imagine as you float up that you're feeling so weightless. Can you imagine? what it feels like to feel weightless, empty, spacious, just like a vessel of pure consciousness. You're so light and you're floating up, 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 off the ground very safely and you're loving this feeling of just being pure space. 
pure light. And you're going to feel yourself like a bubble floating up, so light, so free, so spacious, so pure, so empty. And you're actually going to imagine that you popped out of the atmosphere of the planet and you're still very safe. And you're going to look down at this beautiful globe, this beautiful earth that we call home. Just look at the colors and it's just mesmerizing and majestic and you're just like, oh, it's stunning. And then imagine turning around and floating and looking at the universe, this huge cosmos of galaxies sparkling and shining all colors in all directions. And you can't see it, the end of it because it's endless, it's huge. And imagine looking out at these galaxies, at the universe, and feeling the oneness with all time, all space, all knowing, all wisdom. And just let yourself relax and float in the expanse of the universe. And know that you're one with it all. And now what I'd like you to do is imagine that you're going to start glowing. You're becoming like a ball of light. Just imagine your whole being and your whole energy, your whole space just becomes a wonderful glowing light. And it's shining and shimmering and it's warm and it's powerful. It could be gold, it could be white, it could be yellow. Whatever color comes to you, you're this beautiful ball of vibrant, bright light. Imagine that you can imagine what it feels like to be a beautiful ball of light. And I'd like you to imagine that in front of you, in your mind's eye, you're going to see a circle. A wonderful, welcoming, beautiful circle that's very strong and solid. And that is your heart's true desires. Your heart's true desires. And I want you to imagine floating on through that circle. And when you come out the other side, you are in your land of plenty. Your heart's truth, your wonderful desires, what you love to experience and I want you to imagine what's there. Who is there? Where are you? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What about you? What state are you in? And I want you to walk around and whatever comes to your mind, take it. Do not question, do not judge, do not replace, do not edit, do not just what I get is what I get and you go with it and you make it up. You're walking around your heart's desire, your work walking around what you would love to have and you're imagining it. Who is there? Who are you with? What are you doing? And I just want you to spend another few seconds just absorbing the energy of what that place looks and feels like and taking stock of the details of what is in your heart's true desires. Who, what, where, what are you doing? Where are you? What do you look like? What are you wearing? What are the emotions on your face? What are the emotions of people around you? Really, it's like you're walking around a movie and you're paying attention to everything that's in your heart's true desires. Now, in a moment, I will call you back out of this, but just stay there for a second. And I want you to just really receive and realize that imagination is the language of God. Intuition is the language of God. It is not an accident. What you are seeing in your mind's eye right now is for you purposeful and truthful. So don't judge and reject it. This is not a fun little thing that we're doing for fun. This is you connecting to high states of consciousness, super conscious creative states. 
Your imagination is there for a reason. It's not an accident. It is a tool that we use to create and connect with what we are here to create in our lives. So whatever you are seeing is what you are here to create. If you can see it, it's because you can create it. Otherwise, it would not be there. We're all going to see different things. I don't see what's in your vision and you don't see what's in mine because it's for you. This is your heart, your journey, your truth, what you deserve, what you would love, what you're here to experience. And the reason you see it is because it's true. So this is the vision that you want to maintain and focus on every day so that your brain doesn't keep turning back to the past. But I'm going to just pull you out of this. So so just gently, gently wiggle your fingers and your toes if you had your eyes closed. Um, and then gently blink open your eyes. Um, I would suggest that you write down what you what you took from that, by the way. Um, so you can jot some things down now. Um, you can do it later if you remember it. Um, but basically, um, I would also do that for a lot longer. A lot longer. I would write books, pages not books, of what's in my vision of my heart. What's my truth? What's in there? Um, and you've got to realize that you're receiving that because it's truth. Okay. I have dreamt of things since I was a kid. I could imagine when I was a kid being on a stage, being on a show. I was always very performative and so on. And it started to manifest later in my life. And even at school when I would do like pantomimes and I would love doing that sort of stuff. And then I started presenting videos in my corporate jobs and doing training videos. Then I started doing my own stuff because and I saw that when I was young. Because I know, and you know, in here, in here, your vision is there. You just got to bring it to the surface and create it consciously. So this is how we connect to that. And remember, now we're back in this world after our visualization. Oh, here comes all the things around me that are going to remind me of the past, all the people, all the things. Here comes my brain again going, oh, you remember that dumb thing you did yesterday? Oh, remember that thing you failed at? Remember what your parents did to you once? And you must, as a master of your own destiny and mind, you must say, okay, I see you, but I'm going that way. My vision, I want this, I see that, I want to create this, I'd love to have that. You must change your focus. You, only you can do that. Past, future, where are you looking? The past is going to drag you until you make the vision of the future more powerful and more magnetic that it pulls you to it. And the past is over there now and doesn't have as much power over you. But what a lot of people do, they say, past, ah, uh, bad, fix, problems, uh, power, giving it, energy, give, and they don't have a vision. So there's nothing to pull them in any other direction. And then they're just embroiled in this. So you must create the vision to pull you in that direction. But don't avoid your past. Don't pretend it ain't there. Learn from it. It shaped you. You must become self-aware and know how what you've been through has shaped who you are so that you can use this vehicle effectively to create the vision that you want. But the vision must come from here, not from here. It must come from truth, from wisdom, from God, from knowing, from soul, from spirit, like in the way that I just taught you to connect with that. And I don't know how that was for you, but because we did something that's quite advanced in terms of intuition, uh, if you've never done anything like that but I didn't want to go too much into it so I just want you to play around with it and see right uh, if you are interested in learning more about how to actually use visualization in intuition uh, very 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 powerfully drop me a comment and I will send you a link to some training which I'm, I think they might have closed the registrations um, but they do repeat it and it's amazing. Okay, I'm going to do comments and then I'm going to pass. Let's go to Instagram because we haven't done any comments on Instagram. Uh, Lorraine and my sweet soul. Uh, I see myself creating a documentary. Oh, I get excited just so I know it's true because I've seen it. Uh, documentary and working along with women that have survived narcissistic abuse. I wonder why you and I have I been, darling, because I get that. 
Um, yeah, that's amazing. I love it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I do. Lorena, let me put a note. I'm going to send you the most powerful training that I've ever done in my life. And I've been doing this stuff for 16 years. And I'm not saying that the stuff I'd learned in those other years wasn't great. It did give me a lot. But I tell you what, the work I've been doing recently which is the visual visualization I gave you was just like a second of that. And the way I've explained this focus thing was just, it's just a tiny bit of it. When you realize the power of your mind and how you create your reality, you, 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 you'd be like, what is going on? Like, who am I? I think we have serious amnesia. When you realize how powerful you are, you're a conscious creator made in the image of God. You are not a little meat sack with the psychological issues all your life. You're not a little worker bot here to just make your money and die and pay your bills. And Oh, such shame, you know, you are genius. All of you, all of you, like what Lorena just shared, what she saw in her vision about doing these documentaries. It's amazing. I feel it because it's that's what we're here to do to create things and it doesn't mean you have to create a documentary because that's Lorena's vision maybe you want to create a beautiful family maybe you want to create a restaurant maybe you want to create a nice team maybe you want to create a nice uh, outfit I don't know people have different things that they'd love to create but you all have your genius I'm going to give you a book this is linked to the training okay secrets of natural success William White Cloud okay if you're ready, this is going to change your life. And I don't get commissioned, by the way, to say that. I've been doing the whole curriculum for the last two years, and it is transformative. So Secrets of Natural Success. This is about intuition, genius, creating your life consciously so that the past just doesn't keep repeating and driving you down that road. Um, but they do trainings, and they are amazing. And the first one is such a bargain because it's basically free or it's like really cheap and you do it yourself over a period of time, but you also get lots of people like me. I don't know if I'm volunteering this time um, who volunteer to take you through the training through the intuition exercise. Oh, it's just amazing. Anyway, I'll send it to people who want to know about that. So let me write your name, Lorena, and uh, I'll send you some links because try. I think I think you'd love I think you and I vibe right. I, I think you would just oh it would I really hope it would like everyone who I've put forward to it before has been like oh my god what was that I was like yeah right I'm telling you 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 don't know how magical you are all of you if you knew we've been dumbed down this world this system we live in has made you think that you are just wounds and psychology and trauma and stress and money and I gotta get some I gotta buy some nice fancy shoes to make myself feel better and I gotta blah 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 and I gotta pay my bills and then I, oh come on darlings I'm gonna watch the news and be really depressed about all the bad things I'm not saying it ain't happening but do you know how you contribute to making it better by learning that you are a magical creator of your own reality with a super conscious mind that is literally made in the image of God. Not by sitting here arguing about it with other people and getting annoyed and upset and blah, 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 blah. It's hard, I'm not saying it ain't hard. Life is hard, this world, world is hard, this planet is hard. But to progress, you gotta know who you are. And you are not just a little being of meat and brain and whatever. You are supremely powerful. Okay, let's do some more comments and then I'll go leave. Um, how do you deal with traumatic? This is the traumatic experience. Okay, I'm just going to say two things to you, Amesh. Number one, I haven't been through that. And I don't like to speak about things that I haven't been through because I like to teach from my experience. Um, because that for me is where I give the most value, where I could just talk intellectually, it would mean nothing. It doesn't come from here. So I'm going to say that first. I haven't been through that. Um, so I don't know. Uh, maybe there are other people in, in, in the chat that may have been through things like that that can help with that. Um, but I, I, and all I feel to say to you, Amesh, right now is, again, you're trying to fix something that happened in the past, understandably, because it's painful, it's trauma, you lose a parent. I don't, and it's not about saying that how you feel about that is bad. It's okay. You're hurting still. That's fine. Why would you expect yourself not to if you're still feeling that? 
you're a human, you're hot, you love, of course, it's okay. But this is it. We don't need to fix that. We don't need to say, I had trauma, how do I fix it? How do I deal with it? How about you just say, yeah, I was part of my journey. And it's a part of my heart and my experience. And it hurts still. And that's okay. That's okay. And now, oh, what I love to create next is gentleness with this. It's not fixing and fight. There's nothing wrong with you, Mesh. There's nothing wrong with trauma. There's nothing wrong with pain. Allow it in. Be aware. And then we turn our heads. Okay, what would I like next? What would I like to create? You don't have to fix that in order to create that. That can all be there. You just keep looking ahead. Amesh says, thank you. Pinky, uh, Salih says, you should record mindfulness and meditation audios. I know a number of people have said that to me. I've got a couple on my YouTube. Um, and that's it for now. But I'd love to do more. I just... I just, I just doing too many things, darling, and I can't focus on it and everything at once, and I get really distracted. Typical creative, right? If you know, you know. Where you're like, oh, I can do this and can make this. I can do these things and I can make that. Uh, I'm having to learn to hone it down. But thank you, Sadia, and I would love to. And one day I will create more. There are a couple on my YouTube. Holly says, beautiful. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Umush would like, um, Umesh, Umush, I'm giving you new names. Umush, Amash, Umush, you know. <laughs> Umush would, um, oh God, clearly time for me to sign off now. I'm sorry, lovely. Uh, Umesh would like to know about the intuition. Um, I assume that's what you mean when you say visualization, meditation. Um, so, so intuition, I'll send you information on that. And there we go. So I think I've done all the comments and I'm going to sign out now and I'm going to wish you a wonderful, wonderful afternoon and rest of the weekend. And again, thank you because you make this amazing for me. These comments, these questions. Oh, I'm just so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Thank you so much. Take good care, my lovelies. And I will see you next week. Bye.